Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Bry, Editor-in-Chief of Neurology Now. Welcome to our October-November 2014 issue, which is full of inspiring stories and practical information on managing neurologic conditions. This issue of Neurology Now addresses a neurologic condition that can also be a medical emergency, aneurysm. I was once called to the emergency room to see a man in his early 30s who had collapsed on the tennis court while serving the ball. When I got there, he was complaining of the worst headache of his life and of being nauseated. Although the man was drowsy, he was still able to tell me what had happened and had no muscle weakness or numbness. We immediately sent him to get a brain-computed tomography, or CT scan. It showed that he had bleeding around the surface of the brain in an area called the subarachnoid space. By the time he got back from the scanner, he was extremely drowsy and was not making any sense. Additional testing showed he had a brain aneurysm that had ruptured, causing a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage is a very serious condition and a medical and neurosurgical emergency. About 15% of people with subarachnoid hemorrhage die of complications before even reaching the hospital. Many who recover have permanent brain damage and significant long-term disabilities. In this issue of Neurology Now, actress Tamala Jones tells us about her experience with subarachnoid hemorrhage. Although the road to recovery was rocky for her, ultimately she did recover and is now in good health. My patient did not do so well. He had severe long-term disability from his ruptured aneurysm. Unruptured aneurysms are actually fairly common. Approximately 6 million people in the United States, or 1 in 50, have an unruptured aneurysm. Thankfully, the majority of aneurysms don't rupture. About 30,000 people experience a ruptured aneurysm each year. Before an aneurysm ruptures, there are usually no symptoms and no prior warning unless the aneurysm is large enough to put pressure on the surrounding brain. When an aneurysm ruptures, the most common symptom is what my patient experienced, a sudden severe headache with nausea and vomiting, and other neurologic symptoms such as loss or decreased level of consciousness. Unruptured intracerebral aneurysms are also found incidentally when a person has a brain imaging study done for other reasons. Given the dire consequences of aneurysm rupture, it's certainly understandable how anxious the unexpected news of an aneurysm might be. Much research in recent years has focused on predicting which aneurysms are more likely to rupture and which will not, even over a person's entire lifetime. This information is used to counsel people with unruptured aneurysms about whether or not they need to have a procedure to obliterate the aneurysm. The biggest risk factors for brain aneurysm rupture are a family history of aneurysms, which was true for Ms. Jones but not my patient, aneurysm size, and cigarette smoking. In fact, several studies have shown that if you have two or more family members with brain aneurysms, you should be screened with a brain imaging test to see if you have a brain aneurysm. As our story points out, small brain aneurysms are at low risk of rupture and are usually followed with repeat brain imaging to see if they enlarge. Larger aneurysms have a higher risk for rupture, and a procedure to destroy the aneurysm is generally recommended. The reason why all aneurysms are not treated is that the procedures done to destroy the aneurysms have risks of their own, which have to be considered in the context of the risk of bleeding. Cigarette smoking has many bad health effects, but anyone with an aneurysm should not smoke because of the increased risk for rupture. If you or a family member has experienced a subarachnoid hemorrhage or has an unruptured aneurysm that is being followed, please tell us about it. 
talk with your family about any family history of aneurysms, and if present, be sure to talk with your doctor about it. Now, don't forget to check out the other great content in this issue of Neurology Now. Our story on staying sharp offers expert advice on keeping your brain healthy throughout life with tips on exercise, diet, and mental stimulation, from learning a second language to playing a musical instrument. In Globe Trotters on Four Wheels, we profile three world travelers who use wheelchairs because of neurologic conditions. Their stories will not only inspire you, but will also provide field-tested tips on how to travel safely and comfortably with a wheelchair. Speaking of safety, our feature called The Keys to Safety takes a careful look at four different neurologic conditions, epilepsy, Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's disease, and how they can affect driving ability. At Neurology Now, we strive to not only cover the more common neurologic conditions, but to also report on rare diseases. Check out our story on arachnoiditis for one woman's story of this rare and painful condition, including her eventual diagnosis and treatment. Our waiting room section regularly includes the latest news in neurology. In this issue, we explain the results of a recent study comparing treatments for Parkinson's disease and look at the evidence from a study of a low-fat diet for helping improve pain in trigeminal neuralgia. Don't forget to read the information in Waiting Room on the Neuro Film Festival, an annual contest presented by the American Brain Foundation to help raise awareness about why more research is needed to cure brain diseases. In our healthy brain department for this issue, we look at the importance of maintaining healthy blood sugar on the brain. And in our caregiving department, we offer advice on navigating long-term care insurance. In addition to the print magazine, Neurology Now is available online at www.neurologynow.com, on the iPad, and on mobile devices such as Android. These digital versions allow you to listen to podcasts, watch video interviews, and link directly to other Neurology Now articles, as well as to patient advocacy organizations. To read Neurology Now on the iPad, simply download the app from iTunes, and we'll let you know when a new issue is ready to read. To access Neurology Now for other mobile devices, go to www.neurologynow.com and scroll down the right-hand side of the home page to the box, More Ways to Read NN. We hope you enjoy this issue of Neurology Now. Send us your thoughts by email to neurologynow at lwwny.com or by contacting us on our Facebook or Twitter pages. To find out more ways to contact us, visit www.neurologynow.com or see the At Your Service page of each print issue. Take good care.